Hello, BookTube. This is Fred, and you're watching Read by Fred. So this is going to be a book review. The book is called Hildegard of Bingen, and this was written by Heinrich Schepperges, a German work, and was translated to English by John Cummings. This book was written in about 2000, and uh, the author himself, there's not a lot of information on the author, but I do know that he is a medical historian and he was a university professor. He was born, I believe, in the 30s and passed away in 2003, so this was written later on in his life. The book itself, I was hoping it would be more of an objective read, but unfortunately that wasn't the case. It, it did have a Christian bend to it. Um, when I was reading it, it, it just felt like I was reading a Christian work. But that really didn't detract from the book itself. I mean, it was very well written. The translation uh, was very well done. I didn't find any mistakes, nor did I find any of the, uh, the work in this book confusing. I've read other translated works in the past and I have noted mistakes and I have noted where um, the wording just seemed weird when, uh, when I was reading it and that wasn't the case here. Everything worked well, everything flowed well. This book itself is part of my Historathon 2023 reading uh, goals and uh, this was for the second quarter of Historathon where we were to read books from 15 or 500 CE all the way up to 1500 CE, so basically the Middle Ages in Europe. Uh, the first book I read for this quarter, histor or the second quarter of Historathon, was a book on Mesoamerica, talking about the different cultures during that time, the Mayans, the Aztecs, the Zapotec empires. That was another translated work. Unfortunately, the translation uh, had some issues with it, so it wasn't the best read, and uh, the way that the book was structured, unfortunately, didn't work for me. This book, however, did work for me. Uh, I found this book at a secondhand used store. A secondhand used store. I found this book in a secondhand bookstore, and it was about $12, so it wasn't too bad. And I've always wanted to learn about Hildegard of Bingen. I I know that she was a polymath, so I know that she was very knowledgeable in a lot of subjects. Um, so I was hoping that the book itself would delve into those various subjects. However, unfortunately, that was not the case. It talked about Hildegard herself, uh, her upbringing in a family of 10 children in an upper class family, uh, her being uh, brought into the nunnery, I guess that's the school that they went to back in the Middle Ages. Um, her life in the Middle Ages, uh, her, the visions that she had, it did talk about the herbal medicine that she practiced. Unfortunately, it wasn't as objective as I would have hoped. Um, you know, coming from a medical historian, I would have expected that uh, Mr. Heinrich would have talked about uh, the kinds of herbs that were used, how they were used, how she treated the sick. And he kind of did, but it was more like he talked about Hildegard saying that music was the way to cure illness, that illness is a result of being um, out of touch with God. And really, you know, if I have a headache, I'm taking an aspirin. You know, it just, it wasn't what I was expecting, unfortunately. That's not to detract from the book. The book itself was a good read. I did enjoy it. So Hildegard herself was born in 11, or 1098 BC, or AD, sorry, and passed away in 1179. So she was about 81 years old when she passed. Uh, again, the youngest child in a family of 10 children and uh, born to an upper class family in Germany. She started having visions at a very young age, uh, and uh, she started talking about them, but the, her family told her not to talk about them, obviously, because I'm assuming that um, it would have been construed as uh, something that was not natural, and uh, they might have gotten in trouble for that. But uh, she went to school at the age of eight. I believe she entered into a, a nun school or whatever school it was for children back then. Unfortunately, she didn't have the same education that other that uh, her male counterparts would have had at the time. They focused more on her Latin studies so that she could read the Bible. And uh, that 
it did um, hurt her growing up and becoming an adult. And it's funny, she talks about that. She talks about how she wasn't educated in the same manner as men were. So she wasn't at the same level that they were, which was pretty, pretty interesting reading that um, coming from a woman of the Middle Ages back then. That's not to say that she wasn't educated. I mean, this woman was smart. I mean, when I was reading about the stuff that she did, it was incredible. She she built her own monastery. Well, she didn't build it, but she organized the build of her own monastery. She got all of the permissions, all of the permits required. She dotted all the I's, crossed all the T's, made sure that all the contractors that were required to do the work did the work. And at least from my reading of the building of that monastery from this book, it seemed like it went very well. I mean, if she would have been alive in today's society, she probably would have been the CEO of a multi-billion dollar multinational industry. Like, I mean, this, this was a very smart woman. Her visions, the book also talked about her visions and how when she became an adult, she started talking to someone about her visions um, and wanted to get the Pope's approval to continue having these visions and to express these visions in words and pictures. So there was an investigation conducted and the Pope himself uh, said that the visions were in line with church doctrine and that they were okay to have. I mean, I don't know how you can't have visions if that's what you're having, but uh, they were blessed and uh, that's what made Hildegard famous. Uh, her visions were, she said that they were coming directly from God, which one of her, one of her visions was that she were to build a monastery for women only. You know, that's, that's quite, uh, that's quite a, uh, a good vision to have if you're looking to build your own monastery and, um, you know, populate it with the people that you want it populated with you know she could have had a vision that uh, she could have become uh, working with the poor and handing or handing out the various uh, dowries that were given to um, the monastery when women entered into the monastery handing those out to the poor helping the poor like what mother Teresa did in India but no she didn't have those kind of visions she had the visions where uh, the church was the central theme and she had to create her own monastery and run things herself. Quite coincidental. Or quite convenient, I'm sorry. But uh, overall, it was a good read. I did enjoy this book. Uh, it talked about her life as a young child. It talked about her life in the monastery. It talked about her music, how she uh, created her works of music. And I've actually gone on YouTube uh, from the recommendations of other people that have commented on my channel and listened to some of the works from Hildegard of Bingen. And it's rather very good. I mean, obviously it's just the, it's just the, the music itself. It's sung by someone from today's world, uh, who has a, who had a wonderful voice, but just, it was very relaxing music. So I do appreciate, um, being exposed to that. Uh, in terms of polymath, um, knowledgeable in various subjects. Uh, she was limited in her ability to learn things because she was a woman and women back then were not allowed to learn the same things that a man was. However, she was very ambitious and she learned how to write music herself. She learned, she didn't learn to my knowledge. The book never talked about her learning anything about the sciences or, um, philosophy. So she was very, religious oriented and her visions were very religious oriented and she couldn't actually some of the visions that she had I think she had she wrote three major works on the visions that she had and some of them she couldn't describe with words so she actually drew them and that's I believe that's one of the pictures that she drew to describe her vision there the book itself has a lot of pictures medieval pictures that uh, that are interesting. I mean, I'm I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of medieval artwork. I find it I find it too religious, for my opinion, personally. But 
the book has a lot of pictures like this. So if you are into uh, this kind of artwork, uh, this is definitely a book that you'd want to pick up. This book is no longer in print. Uh, if you're going to find this book, you're going to find it at uh, used bookstores. But overall, I gave this book a solid three out of five stars. It was a good read. And I did learn a lot about Hildegard of Bingen. Unfortunately, it wasn't an objective learn. It was very Christian oriented. But again, that didn't detract from the book itself. It read well, it flowed well. And overall, it was a great reading experience for me. Anyways, let me know down in the comments below if you know about this individual and if you've read up on her and uh, what you're reading for the third quarter of Historathon, which is happening right now, and that's between 1500 CE all the way to 1820 CE. Anyways, thanks so much for watching this video. This is Fred, and you're watching Read by Fred.